got men's basketball. Head coach Ryan Ritter joining us for the first time as next week the UT Martin men will open up their season. But, Coach, we've got a very important Thursday night, the tip-off event. You and the women's team are going to be over that. Meet and greet going to happen. Students, you're going to get a free T-shirt and free food for the first 500 students there. Also be eligible for some prizes as well. Again, mention it, the men next Monday at 6 at home against Champion Christian. The women next Monday at Marquette at noon. Play exhibition today. But, Coach, we focus in on the men's program for you. First of all, thanks so much for joining us, and how fired up are you? Year number three for you here at Martin. Year number three. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, you know, obviously always great time of the year. Basketball season's tipping off. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I think the word would be excitement. You know, we, we've, we've retained a lot of guys, and we, we added a lot of newcomers. And, um, have had our two two ex or two scrimmages, so you know a week away, and just just fired up to to finally be here. And looking back on last year's team, KJ and Parker, they're gone, but you just said it. Bring back a ton of talent in Jordan Sears, KK Curry, also Kobe as well. One of those players that flies under the radar, but I remember at the OVC tournament, you just talked so much about how this guy is totally – he will do whatever it takes for this team to win. So you get a lot of those guys back, but also bring in some very talented newcomers. I mean, how has the team meshed so far? Well, I think you said it first. You know, obviously you lose K.J. Simon, you lose Parker Stewart. Um, you know, you got to give those guys credit. That, that's 30 points and, uh, you know, probably 10 or 11 rebounds a night out, out the door. So I don't think you're going to replace them with an individual – person or two but I think what we have done um, you said it we retained uh, six guys that played a lot of minutes we retained guys that understand how to win you know winning 19 games here last year um, and then the, you, you add in the new guys I think um, all come from winning programs you know whether it was winning at the division one level the junior college level um, but you know Jacob Cruz Issa Muhammad um, you know the, those guys have, have made an impact early and I think you know we'll look for some of those other guys Christian Fussell Justice Jackson uh, Sebastian Mendoza we, we've got a, a plethora of guys that we feel very com confident um, that, that understand you know how to win and, and I think that's really important going into year three you've been through the conference and seen the OVC for a couple of years now does the part of the recruiting uh, incorporate players that sh that fit in this conference and that can help you win this conference yeah, no doubt. I think, um, you know, last year we, it's, it is what it is. We lost on, on Friday. We're trying to play Saturday, and we didn't shoot the ball well. Um, and and we, we really targeted guys that could shoot the basketball. Um, you know, also thought that, that, that you know, that, again, Chris Nix was a really good player for us last year. He, he uh, you know, is, is not, no, not here any longer and um, felt like we really needed to upgrade inside. And I think we did that with, with Issa Muhammad and Christian, Christian Fussell, I think two physical guys that – we haven't had uh, bigs as big as them the last two years, so I think you know to attack shooting and rebounding in the in the off season, I think we did a pretty good job of that. How are you embracing the transfer portal? Because if you don't embrace it, it's going to pass you by. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I think you hear a lot of people complain about the transfer portal, and I, I think the the reality is it's part of the rules, and um, you know you gotta you gotta embrace it. If not, you're going to be left behind. And and you know, for us, if you look at us, KJ Simon came from the transfer portal. Parker Stewart came from the transfer portal. Jordan Sears came from the transfer portal. So, um, you know, will you lose a guy or two here that that you wish maybe could stay? Yeah, absolutely. But I think. For us, the transfer portal has been, been really good. I think, you know, getting Issa and Christian and Justice um, out of there this year, I think we're, we're pretty fired up about it. A very tough non-conference schedule coming up. You've got Mississippi State, NC State, EKU's another really good mid-major team, and then Rice also up there. I mean, what type of team are you looking to see come out of non-conference play? I think when you put your non-conference, uh, you know, schedule together for us, you know, we, we've got to be very budget conscious. You know, we've, we've got to try to do a – uh, a good job of playing some regional teams, but I think for us ultimately it's about um, you know challenging ourselves and having a chance to play in some close games in non-conference, as well as um, you know Mississippi State. They're going to be they're going to be physical. They're going to pound you. They're going to play slow pace, and I think that's very reminiscent of a really good team in our league, uh, Moorhead State. Mm -hmm. And then you look at someone like EKU, who's going to play at a really high tempo. You know they're picked to win their league, Atlantic Sun. They're they're a top 25 mid-major team. Um, they play with an unbelievable pace. Well, if you look at the OVC, uh, we're the second fastest. Uh, tempo in the in the country, so I think we we want to challenge ourselves with some physical toughness. We want to challenge ourselves with a team that plays at a really high uh, pace of play. You just talked about Moorhead State. I mean, you look at the OVC this year, a ton of depth. You've got great teams: SIUE, Moorhead State, Tennessee State, and just up and down a ton of depth from this conference. I mean, who is impressing you out of this bunch? Obviously, Moorhead State, great defensively. I believe Mark Freeman's going to be out for a little while, but still, so much talent within that team and also around the league as well. Yeah, I think uh, you know Moorhead gets gets a lot of the uh, you know gets a lot of publicity publicity, and they should. Uh, you know they they've had three really really good years. They they in my opinion they were the best team in our league last year. Although it took a uh, 
took took a uh, loss early in the conference tournament. But I'll tell you, I think uh, Brian Baroni at SIUE, I think they're doing a great job. They retained four starters. Uh, they've got, you know, arguably the best backcourt in the league. And then, you know, Penny does a great job down at, at, at Tennessee State. Um, you know, they've got a heck of a backcourt. They, they've recruited some interior depth. So, um, but I won't be surprised. You know, yeah, Little Rock's recruited really well. Obviously, Tennessee Tech had a good run last year. But um, I'll tell you, my sleeper team, Western Illinois, I, yeah. I think they're going to be really good. I think um, you know, they, they've got guys that fit, fit what they do, and, and I, won't be see, I won't be shocked to see them uh, transition very easy into the OVC. You just hit on something in Western Illinois, now a member of the OVC. The OVC has been very fluid in your years here at UT Martin. It's, it's, it's evolving, um, still as strong and tough as ever, though, but it's hard, I guess, to get a – feel about what are these teams going to be like what are the coaching styles like what are the players like because it's changing so much well I think that's that's kind of reminiscent of college basketball right like everything's changing whether it's NLI whether it's transfer portal um, you know whether it's retention rates uh, there's so many different changes and I think just like our league you know our, our league has got solid footing now I think we feel really good about where we are as a league I think you'll see in the next two or three years uh, I think you'll see you know for the longest time right it's been Belmont and Murray had, had kind of been the front runners of our league and I think You'll see here these next three, four, five years, we all got a chance to, to, to kind of take that throne. And, and I know, you know, our, our staff feels as, as good as anybody that, that we can be that, that, that next, guy, next guy up. I love that opportunistic <laughs> attitude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. yeah you, you talked to Chris, Coach, after the Tennessee Tech game at the OVC tournament, saying, you know, if it was okay that Joe wanted to stay on Saturday and be able to make it to that day, and what has to happen this season for the UT Martin Scoggs to be playing on championship Saturday? Well, it's you know I've I've been on this this thing. There's two things for our guys. Okay, we're, we're, we I do think we're going to be better improved defensively. I think we've got a premier point guard in the league. I think we've got interior size and depth. But it really comes down to to, to two things: are our guys willing to be ultimate teammates, and do they put winning first? And it sounds very simple, um, but the great teams are able to do it even when their numbers not called when they've had a tough day. Um, and, and I think right now collectively. Um, you know, we've got 14 guys in that locker room that are seeing bigger picture. And I'll be really curious as adversity hits and, and the length of the season. Um, but, but if you hear this word a lot this year, you've got to find a way to be a great teammate. And that's our only team rule. And it just it's, it's, uh, you know, relates so much to, to everyday life. That's a mindset. That transcends basketball. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, you say, go ask any of our guys, what does what Coach Deem important? Be a great teammate. That's what we talk about every single day. And that, a lot of that is off the floor, right? No doubt. And, and it's funny because – you got these, and it, everyone does it different ways. But um, we, we really we have one rule, and it's be a great teammate. Because you know, if it's a Friday night, we got a game on Saturday. What are you doing Friday night? You're being a great teammate uh, because that, that 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 applies. You know, what are you doing Saturday after a game? What are you doing in the classroom? Uh, what are you doing when when a guy hits the deck and falls on the floor? Do you, you first want to pick him up. So I think there's just so many, uh, you know, so many things that that go into being a great teammate. If I quit this season, I still be the greatest. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. Sam Schumann from the UT Martin Cross Country Team joins Chris and I here on the Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast. Sam, you just earned a first team All OVC honors. Congratulations on that this weekend at the Cross Country Championships. So again, congratulations on yeah. that. And Thank how'd you. you feel about your performance there? I felt good. I went into it very confident, ready to go. Uh when you put yourself in that situation, you know, you just kind of got to just take the nerves and kind of make it just fuel you and not just let it get to your head. Just kind of, you know what you need to do. I've been here before, so just kind of was ready to do that. So. And what's your approach before races? Is it the same? Was your approach the same here this weekend as it is to previous weekends, or do you t take a look at this one a little bit different than compared to the other races? Um, so I've, I've got some rituals I usually do, for sure, that I uh, – I do every single race, but I'm not going to get into those. I've got a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but, you know, going into it, just like I said, the nerves and stuff, can't just can't let it override you and not overthink it. You know, before a meet, we I usually like to, like, visualize things, kind of what I need to do, kind of go through different possibilities of what could happen, whether uh, things can flare up, soreness. So just kind of put myself in a position of where I can uh, – perform where I needed what I need to do I'm excited to get to talk to you I'm listening to an audiobook called Atomic Habits and mm -hmm. it's a division one athlete talking right. about how you have to have good habits and how it's like compound interest at a bank it helps you in the long run right to get all OVC honors you've obviously had some good habits through your career right. you you mentioned things that you do but what are some of the habits that helped you from a training standpoint from a mental standpoint mm -hmm. to help you consistently be great so some of the habits I 
I like to listen to podcasts as well. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, it kind of gets my mind right. I listen to, like, David Goggins a lot. I don't know if you've probably heard of him. That's, yeah. you know, he kind of he kind of fuels my fire a little bit. Kind of, I think, just listening to other people and listening to how other people's other, like, accomplishments and everything, what they do. It's like, why not me? Like, why can't, why can't I, why can't I be something great, you know? So, growing up, that's, like, my dream was to become a college athlete, and a bigger dream of mine was to become a D1 athlete, and I, uh, like, I'm here, so why not perform to my best ability? That's so. the mindset part. Physically, you were just talking off the air. You were getting up at what time every morning? About 5.30. Yeah. yeah. To do what? To go run. Not to eat breakfast, not to watch no. the news, yeah. but to so run. So do you run. eat before you go and run at 5.30 um, in the morning? Or do you maybe get a protein bar, protein shake before you run? Uh, I uh, I usually eat about a granola bar or so. I, uh, I got this deal this, this summer. It's called Bob's Pickle Pops. I, I do uh, – <laughs> yeah, I pickle juice is – that's my thing. I like pickle juice. It, it – it recovers you a lot of electrolytes, a lot of salt, and everything. Yeah. So I usually eat one of those popsicles you before I go run. I, I know of this, but will never be brave enough to try this. Pickle juice. Yeah. Does it, it, now correct me if I'm wrong. Does pickle juice help with cramps too? Yes, it does. It, okay. See, I, all my years of being in high school athletics, yeah. and being manager on the football yeah. team, you pick mm-hmm. up on some things. Yeah. It's, so pickle pops. Okay. Yeah, when did that start? I started a little bit in high school, and then I got kind of my mom. My mom came home. I was suffering with some soreness and stuff and my mom came home one day and got me these pickle pops and I started taking them and I just felt really good I don't know it might have been a little placebo effect but (laughs) you know whatever whatever helps me believe to make me feel the best I mean that's just you're not buying these at local grocery stores in Martin are you no I I I got a deal with them so they they send me stuff oh that's awesome yeah Yeah. so So. what is it a popsicle they come in these, yeah. It's a popsicle, but they also come in like these little, these little things. I don't even know. I mean, I could show you a picture of them, but they're like th- these little uh, things. I think they're like, like nine ounces or something like that, somewhere in that range. So I usually take one of those down before and after. Huh? Is it, <laughs> an, is it an acquired taste, or do you just? Um, are they, are there, it, it could be. It, I don't know. It depends who you ask. I think. I yeah. think I've always kind of disliked them, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's a little bit more of a quieter taste here. So Davis, I know what I'm getting you for Christmas now. No, yeah. I guess I guess on the next show we have to try pickle <laughs> yeah. pops. Yeah. I, oh yeah, I guess, I guess we got to go with it. So, <laughs> Sam, getting into um, just your career, how'd you get into cross country? Because I don't know, I know you also do track and field mm-hmm. here, but just for cross, I mean, how'd you get into this? Cross. Okay, so I started my seventh grade. Uh, my friends, my friend's mom was like, "Hey, why don't you guys just come out and." come run and stuff. I was like, man, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> I was like running. I was like, oh, you know, cause I played basketball. I played baseball. I was like, but running that's, so I went out there and I was like, okay, I can get in shape and then I'll go to basketball. But then I just fell in love with running and then that's what I like to do. So that's, I just kind of just seventh grade and then on, on up. So. And what drew you to UT Martin? Do what? And what drew you to UT Martin? J- UT Martin. Okay. So my, uh, Kevin, the old cross country coach, hit like hit my coach up and said, "Hey, uh, hey, we're really interested in Sam and stuff." And I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "D1, wow!" I didn't even think about that because I, I was kind of looking for some local schools, and I was like, "Okay, it's like UT Martin. It's uh, it's it's a far away. I wanted a new experience. I kind of wanted to live on my own and kind of find out who I really was, right. not just live at home and." But I wanted to meet new people, you know, because the guys I surround myself with are going to be the guys that are going to be in my wedding one day. Right. So the the thing that really drew me was the guys. And I think that you surround yourself with a good group of guys, and a good group of coaches and staff and everything. It really makes the place a lot better. So the team is what is what really did it for me. And just the camaraderie. I guess for you mm-hmm. and, and that community and talking about your coaches, Coach Henderson, Coach Palacio, final question for you. What is your favorite lesson that they have taught you here in your two years at UT Martin? Um, favorite what, favorite lesson probably uh, – oh, man, that's a tough question. We ask the hard hitters. Here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you we guys make to. me think here. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, don't get nervous. He's right over there. He's yeah. watching. <laughs> Just to – just to trust myself because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm the one in those shoes. I'm the one that has to perform. 
and uh, trusting your body and just doing doing what I need to do to what I need to perform better because I'm the one that, like I, like I said I'm the one that has to I'm the one that has to wear those shoes I'm the one that has to walk around I'm the one that wears that uniform so just trusting in myself and and just performing the best that I can if I quit this season, I still be the greatest. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. Mike Varga joins Chris and I here at the Zaxby's in Martin, Tennessee, discussing UT Martin's 2023 season. The Skyhawks' top five finish in the standings, their 20th appearance in the OVC tournament, and go to Evansville. Little Rock gets the best of them, though, and the Skyhawks' season comes to a close. Uh, Coach, just your first year here with the team, and again, only got here about, what, two weeks before the season started and everything. You get fifth yep. place, make it to the tournament. Now, what were some of the challenges in the first year here for you? I think it was just getting to know the players, understanding what their strengths, weaknesses were, how to get them set up where they could succeed. And, and uh, it really didn't take as long as I had thought just because the quality of the, of the girls here was – they they were so so great coming in, and worked hard from the start, and uh, it it did. It took a little little bit of time to sort of put the puzzle together, but uh, you know a lot of young players and and you know I can't couldn't say enough about Katie Hunt, um, just one of the most incredible seniors I've ever been fortunate enough to coach, and she's you know she's going to be missed. But no, it was you know it's it's always disappointing, and I I feel like. Even fifth, with everything we could say as part of the season, was still disappointing. Mm-hmm. I think if we would have if we would have won our last match instead of tied, I think we would have finished tied for third. Um, maybe that would have felt a little bit better, but yeah, I have no doubt that moving forward we can we can be at the top of the conference. Look, I want to be the first one on behalf of this community and the University of Tennessee at Martin to congratulate you on what I feel was an incredibly successful season based on the situation you were put in. Oh, thanks. Again, most coaches like to take the uh, the slow cooker approach to developing that what you're talking about that relationship with players and programs you you got thrown in a microwave oven uh maybe a hot pocket style where it's like two and a half minutes and and you're right i mean you could tell the camaraderie the trust um the the devotion was all there and and even you talked about where you could have finished given this play here or this play there and so many close matches it could have been an even better season than it was, and I still consider it to be tremendously successful. Oh, I really so that's my that. pat on your back. But oh, thank you very, very much. Very few people could have been put in your situation and done what you and the team did. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I really appreciate it. Yeah, that. and I mean, two weeks before the year gets started and this team that we finished – eighth last year made the tournament and and got a win there but still this team this year with all the newcomers and everything getting a top five finish i want to talk though coach i mean you've been around for close to 30 years with head coaching wow i mean what is the comparison (laughs) but you and in 30 years you've never done what you've done in the last (laughs) season right have you ever been put in that situation no 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 No. yeah so i mean compare (laughs) this year to your other first year coaching experiences wow so i i've i've had some longevity where I've been. <clears throat> First, Lincoln Memorial was a startup program, so I had some time to bring in players, and it was first game for everybody. I think we ended up losing our first six or seven matches that year, and I made the mistake of telling the – and I was coaching the men as well. I made the mistake of telling the teams, if, if we win the rest of our games, and I thought, there's no chance, you can shave my head. <laughs> and without – without conferring with the assistants, I said, you could shave their heads too. <laughs> and that, that rallied the troops. And the, the girls won their last, I think, seven matches, and the men went on to win out. We didn't make any turn. At that time, Division Two, I think you had to be top eight in the nation to get the, the, a, a chance to go to the tournament. Yeah. So they went out, and I thought, maybe they forgot. No chance. They, they <laughs> grabbed a chair. They grabbed the extension cord, and they, they grabbed the, the clippers, put me on the center circle, I don't think there was a guard on, oh. and I probably still have some scars on my head. <laughs> and they, they ripped my hair right out right there and thought it was the best thing ever. So, we, and what about your assistant coaches? Did yeah, they, What was their reaction to it? The, the assistants? Yeah. Yeah, they weren't happy, but. <laughs> You're still sending them Christmas gifts, That's right? One of them, <laughs> Every year. One of them was a, a high school teammate of mine that I brought him in to start coaching. Another one was a, a friend of a friend, and their graduate assistants is all I had. And uh, 
Yeah, they didn't think it would happen either, and sure yeah. enough, <laughs> three bald mice. <laughs> there we were. So oh, there, goodness. and then I, I went to South Alabama. I got hired right around signing date, and there was about a four-month gap between me getting hired and the previous coach leaving to go to Kansas, and it was the, the whole team transferred. I had six returning players coming in that following year, the athletic director said, and I've never, this is unprecedented, and he actually came to me and said, if you want to take the season off, we'll redshirt those six players and you can recruit. And I said, no, that's, let's just, let's see what we can do. Yeah. And so recruited, I think I brought in 20, 20 kids in six, seven months and uh, actually had a, a decent season. And uh, within two years, we won the, we won the league. Yeah. And then th from there to Gardner-Webb, and Gardner-Webb was... You know, I, I had been there for a while, so I'd been able to recruit a little bit. and Yeah, but here it was get to know your team first day. And, and not just that, it was get to know the parents during yeah, right. during games and after games. And it was uh, – and they were uh, just a great group of parents, and everybody's been wonderful. So it couldn't, couldn't have been a better move for me. And we also had youth soccer appreciation night as the final match of the year. I want to talk about some of your work with youth soccer. I mean, where did the motivation for you start with that to start growing the game in that community? Well, I think it's it's so important. You know, all my, my kids played. Um, it's so important to be invested in the community that you're part of. And, and I think it's good for our players to be able to coach a little bit at U6 or U10 or get out there. And, and you know, it brings – those people to our games but it also I think it's better for us to get out there and interact with them and I, I think a big part of, of what any student athlete does is get involved in your community and, and and interact with people that's I think there's so much that that you learn from that getting people skills and everything like that what is your favorite thing though about working in youth sports I mean building up that community and everything like that but where are some other things that you really enjoy in that I love the, the, the development I think there's when you can coach younger kids at younger ages, they don't have bad habits yet, and, and you can you can watch how, how how quickly they grow. It's it's incredible. So I, I think those sort of things, the smiles on the kids' faces. I think the big thing for me is helping instill whether it's soccer, whether it's basketball, whether, you know whatever it is. If you can help instill passion in a kid for a sport and get them to really enjoy it, that's They'll love yeah, you're it. winning. They'll love it. Uh, what are some of the things you're looking to do in Martin? Again, we had that night, and my favorite thing about that night was we – I think we only had maybe a few kids that were scheduled to do the penalty kick, but all these kids just got on the field, and we had it like seven different games going on at halftime. They were absolutely loving that. Uh, along with you, Soccer Appreciation Night, what are some other things you're looking to do here in Martin? Well, I want to do whatever, whatever we can to help grow the sport. I want to – I can't wait to go see – I've been to – football and volleyball and i i can't wait to to see and support our basketball programs and, and every sport here so it, that's one thing i think the the coaches here are supportive of each other the student athletes are supportive of each other and and the community here has been been incredible so i can't wait to just get to know more people and and get to yeah that part of i've never left college i went to college really never left <laughs> <laughs> so I, i'm yeah. 18 to 22 yeah. forever yeah. <laughs> but uh you, know, you couldn't be in a better place. You, you go to a, a college basketball game and or a football game or, or, you know, it's not everyone has a luxury to do that. If I quit this season, I still be the Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. XB's in Martin, Tennessee. Davis Gregory here alongside Chris Brinkley. Now joining us, head coach of the UT Martin volleyball team, Jacqueline Wilson as the Skyhawks. Have an off week this week and then one final home series next week on Thursday and Friday when UT Martin hosts Little Rock. And coach, just going to talk about quickly here, the team's growth up to this point. What have you seen from them? Yeah, I mean, we've talked a lot on these shows about kind of the, the highs and lows of the season. And, you know, I still um, – don't think that we've peaked. I kind of joke, I, I hope we do peak, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, we're, we're running out of time a little bit here coming into the last couple weeks. I thought we played really, really well. Some of our best volleyball we've played this, this season um, at home against SIUE. Uh, I thought they, they played good volleyball as well when they were here. Um, I've got to give credit to Moorhead when we, we were just at Moorhead. Um, I don't think we played our best volleyball, and I definitely was disappointed in some areas of our game. But um, I thought 
I thought they played really well. They played really hard. Um, they kept everything off the ground. And um, that's, that's tough to beat on their home court and, and energy. Um, but I think we've grown a lot as a team. We've tried some different things. Um, again, a lot of highs and lows this year, probably a little bit more lows. So, um, but I give credit to the girls. I think, you know, they're, they're keeping, you know, their chins up and just focused. We know we, know we can do it. We know we can be a good team um, and just continue to work and, and try to achieve and with, and with the off week this week, decided to get to know Coach Wilson a little bit more and learn about your career up to this point, your playing career, and then also coaching wise. So we'll go all the way back to high school. And da- your Davis time. has been studying. I have. He's been doing a little deep dive. I have, I have this <laughs> morning. Life. I, have. Okay. Well, I, I have. mentioned I don't have a great memory, so you might know a little <laughs> bit more about <laughs> myself than, me, than so, I do. <laughs> so your time at Jonathan Alder High School, did I get that right? You did. So oh, you were an all-Madison County honoree in both basketball and softball and volleyball, so yeah. a three-sport Boy, athlete. Yeah. What was that like, and what did you learn there? Uh, gosh, it's very similar to, I mean, a smaller – um, athletic dominant high school, kind of like Westview, I feel here in, in Martin, Tennessee, um, where, you know, for us, it, the athletes played everything and we just, you know, you what, did. What was your graduating class? Everything. Oh, four. We are coming up. Oh, how many? 110. Yeah. 110. Oh, just 110. like Westview. Yeah, pretty much. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 110. So yeah. Um, we actually, they just posted on Facebook or um, their 20 year reunion coming up, showing my age a little bit. But um, <laughs> are you going? I don't know. It's in April. I'm in beach season. We're uh, off that weekend. Yeah. If I can jet up, I would love to go home mm, and, yeah. and see some people. But yeah. um, it was a lot of fun. I think playing multiple sports, I, I do think I tend to draw a little more when I recruit to multi-sport athletes because that's what I did and, and I believe in it. Um, I, I do see both sides of things and, and Julia was kind of the opposite and um, it was all volleyball and volleyball all the time. And um, I think there's definitely some benefits and, you know, to both. But it was an awesome experience. I, I played in the Final Four in basketball and um, have some, some awesome memories there. I was the only senior, and there were no juniors, all sophomore and freshmen, and we played in the Final Four. This is in Ohio? So, Ohio. Yeah. What position? I was – a guard most of my life yeah. and then um, my senior year I had a bunch of babies on the team <laughs> so I went down low and would come out and shoot some but I was probably our our biggest yeah so she was a stretch five what was your strength I, good. defense and shooting yeah shooting I, I, I mean anything out would have been yeah, perfect in the Kevin no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean come softball on softball position <laughs> My favorite position was center field, and that's what I played my junior and senior year. Um, I love chasing down fly balls, but um, I've played a little bit of everything. Third, um, that ball gets on you quick. Um, <laughs> but played some third, pitched when I was younger, um, really anywhere in the infield. But I loved playing outfield, not when I was younger. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, picking, you, you, know, oh, yeah. you felt <laughs> like they threw you out there because – Oh, no, they threw yeah, me yeah. out there, and I, d- I didn't know what was <laughs> yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. I was so. just out there trying to have a good time. <laughs> so after high school, you go to Coastal Carolina, but have a, have a shoulder injury there that was pretty severe. And just talk about that and having to overcome that injury. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I tore my shoulder, uh, my labrum, early in my freshman season. Um, decided to play through the season because I've seen the floor some at that time. Um, and decided to play through it, have the surgery at the end of season. And um, by the end of season, it was in pretty rough shape. And they referred to it as shredded. Um, had surgery, d- rehab, came back, and um, within a couple of weeks, retore. Oh. Um, retore it. I just kind of I, I struggled with it and, and did not return to play. Um, at that time, I did later in life. Um, and then a couple of surgeries later, I'm finally stabilized shoulder. But you, yeah, the I, we talked about your surgery before, mm-hmm. and that that's a devastating injury, and it wasn't. It was a major injury that impacts your life to this day. I'm sure. Now that you look back on it, what meaning do you give that in, in, injury in your life? How did it oh impact your life? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I use I use a lot of these conversations when I recruit because. Um, I have, I didn't have the best collegiate volleyball experience. Now, volleyball in my life as a whole was amazing and, um, you know, has 
given me so many awesome life lessons and strengths and um but I my I didn't have a lot of support when I was injured and on the return and so and I felt kind of pushed aside and um on to the next business focused I guess from the coach's perspective but um for me with my athletes when they get injured I'm going to stand by them if they're willing to put in the work because it's hard it's hard coming back from an injury I believe you're better if you get through it and you come back because you learn from the sideline um but I, I stand by my kids. If you get injured, I've had kids call me their senior year in tears because Karen Scanlon tore her ACL her senior year in high school, last match of the season, Oof. called me in tears because she didn't think I'd want her anymore. And I was like, get your butt out here. Like, <laughs> yeah. let's go. And she's probably the best, yeah. you know, her and Logan, best players I've ever coached. And, um, you know, it's not easy. And as a coach, it, it sucks when you have an injured player and they're yeah. sidelined. But at the end of the day, it's, I, I, I think – these kids need more support with that. You're giving to them what you didn't get. Right. right. And yeah. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing had yeah. I not had that experience. Yeah. So. And, and then you go to Columbus State where you play, get a conference championship there, also coach there and were the head coach there before you came to UT Martin. And then whenever you got to UT Martin, what was that process like and the hiring process and then coming over here? Yeah, uh, the hiring process, well, I – we had a really great year. We were going to be really, really good the next year. And then I was going to kind of try to hit the trail to try to find a division two, four year or division one. Um, at that time, I didn't really know if I could kind of get into the division one level, um, on that next move. Uh, so I was going to give it one more year. I had most of my players returning and, um, I got a call from the AD here at UT Martin and, uh, who was Julio at the time. And, um, said he wanted to talk and would like to get me on campus and it just moved really quick you know and I, I at first it was like what, what do I do here and I'm like well I would I would be silly not to entertain and look into this you know I don't think there's ever a good time to leave your players or leave your kids when you recruit kids they come to play for you um, so that was really hard um, but I knew it was a move eventually I wanted to make and it was an opportunity and so feel very blessed that it happened that way. Met your husband? Met my husband. Hey, I believe I came to Martin, Tennessee. Um, you know, God put me here for a lot of reasons. Yes. But, yeah, I, I met my husband. I have two beautiful young girls and um, a life like I never dreamed of. You know, I never dreamed of being a mom. I never dreamt of getting married and having kids. I mean, if it happened, cool, great. Um, I was very career-focused and cool with my friends. And um, so I, I believe God put me here for that purpose, and it's – better than I ever dreamed of. So. One final question before we let you go. Quickly, what is one of the most important things you've learned here at UT Martin? Oh, goodness. Um, I guess I, just to tie into that, you know, I was always so career focused and career driven. And for me, if I weren't coaching at the, you know, the Nebraska, the, you know, Louisville, the big Florida big volleyball programs like that's where I wanted to be and I, I, I wanted to do it at the highest level and for me I've learned there's just so much more to it and um, you know I, it's just not all about that status right. and um, I've just learned to appreciate the smaller things the small town um, the family you know for me that's number one now and you know again it wasn't really on my radar and um, so I think just learning to like slow down a little bit and appreciate the little things. And, and even in the recruiting process, some of these girls want to go to the biggest, best school. And it's like, okay, do you want to go and stand on the sideline and say you played for Florida? That's still really cool. Or you can come here and, you know, be on the floor and make a huge impact and have a cool culture, I think. Yeah. If I quit this season, I still be the biggest. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. UT Martin going up to Gardner Webb, a, a close one there as the Bulldogs win 38 34. And coach, a very long drive up there, about nine hours, yeah. 10 hours. And a very tough Gardner Webb team. And you talked about it all yeah. week, a very talented group. And just your overall thoughts on the game. Yeah, well, disappointing. Uh, disappointing. Uh, I mean, there was some, I'll tell you exactly what I told the staff. Um, you know, uh, the, Part of the drive is, and the, the travels is, is one of the competitive advantages we have when teams come play us here. Okay, we we know that we've benefited for that for years. Well, same way there. I mean, it's ten hours before we get there and get situated. But regardless, you know, you return to open the kickoff, and you you know you get a short field, but you settle for a field goal. All right, uh, you know, 
then you get a, a, a poor call on fourth down at pass interference. Uh, yeah, you know, extends the drive and they go 19 plays on the first drive and they, you know, and they score. So there's some things we got to do better uh, there. So I didn't think we chased the ball very well in the first half on defense. I thought we missed a lot of tackles. We gave up 240 yards. Uh, we give up a sack. Uh, the back misses the protection, misses a sack. Uh, quarterback, you know, uh, the ball comes out of his hand. They, this quick six. So it's 31 20 at halftime. Uh, you know, but real, my statement to the to our team was, okay, we're going to score three times, all right, and you're not going to let them score. So I was almost right, okay, as we come back out. We give up 28 yards until the last drive, okay, and we score twice, but we miss a field goal, all right. So, you know, almost, um, you know, right on there to get them. But I was proud of the kids. You get the lead back. You got an opportunity with seven minutes left to uh, can you get, you know, one more drive. Uh, you know, that's when we went down, missed a field goal get a stop, get it back, uh, come up a yard short on a fourth down, punt it back to them with five minutes left, and that's when they go on a, you know, a long drive to, to win the game and convert, I guess, two or three, four, you know, fourth down. So uh, pretty dis- pretty disappointing with that. But here's the reality of it. Just like for the last you, – you've won six games in a row, and as coaches that's very rewarding. That's, um, you know, to see the players execute. Uh, you know, they executed, we didn't. They, you can look at it and say they made one more play than – uh, then we did the yards were evil, even 340 to 340, two pretty good defenses out there. Uh, but give them credit, they got a freshman quarterback that that uh, went the length of the field of, to win the game. Uh, but we didn't cover very well. We made some critical mistakes, uh, you know, and, and all of us contributed, me the most being the head coach. Uh, we got to coach better. We got to play better to win those games on the road. Quick question, and mm-hmm. I've seen you in the film room. We watch mm-hmm. a game that you play, and it's over, and it's over for the fans. You watch the game you play in real time, and then you live it over and over yeah. and over and over and over again. Yeah. Some games are easier to watch than others, yeah. obviously. But your mentality as an older coach now is, I guess, mm-hmm. to objectively just watch a game. What's that experience like in a game like you had Saturday? Um, are you talking about film or why? Yeah, you're, why film, you're film. Yeah, you know, I hadn't slept a whole lot, you know, on yeah. the way back on the bus or, uh, you know, the last 48 hours uh, because there's there, – as a play caller as well, not just as a head coach, as a, as a head coach, how could you practice better? What could you have held your coaches more responsible for? Uh, that they could have taught better, uh, you know, what what is some buttons you could have pushed, you know, I could ask Coach Butcher to play a different defense on that last fourth down or the one that O'Shea got the pass interference, you know, I always have the the, the last say so, okay, but, 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 you know, so I question myself on a lot of different calls, maybe I should have done differently, uh, and then you see, um, you know, the different mistakes. Did we make the mistake because of effort? Did we make the mistake because of poor technique? Did we make the mistake because of lack of concentration, attention to detail? And usually the answer is, is all those things are usually yes, okay? Um, you know, but, you know, there's still a human element that comes, you know, in, in the game. Uh, those are the same kids that won six games in a row that, that made, you know, certain plays. Uh, you know, so you you know you it's not the the sky can't be falling. You have to learn from it. And you were one play away from winning the game. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's a lot easier to correct those mistakes as as when you're sitting in there. You know, Eastern Illinois didn't make that play. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's right. Uh, you know, so uh, you know, and it, it kind of reminds you you're not as you're, you're never as good as you think. Okay, I don't care how many games you've winning win in a row. Uh, but we competed. We just we we've got to do it at a higher level. And three different receivers. They have a touchdown catch on Saturday. You were able to get them the ball and and let them use those playmaking abilities. Talking about Devonte, Marlon, Trevante, yeah. and Zoe. I mean, how did you? How big is that just for the offense to get those guys the football and, and let them work in the open field? No, that that, that was uh, proud of the three touchdown passes. We made an emphasis to try to get those guys involved, and our coaches and our players worked really hard for that. You know, we had been over 200 yards passing in several weeks. The problem is uh, we hadn't put the good rushing game together yet with the 200-yard pass game lately, okay, the last, you know, the last three weeks. And so sometimes you can kind of get yourself in a, in a rut. And now players make all that better, okay, don't get me wrong. I mean, Colton Dow will fix that. You know, dresser win. You know, fix that. But you've got the players that you've got, and they've all got different strengths and weaknesses. So, you know, schematically, you're searching every week to how do you do it. Uh, you know, uh, they held Sam Franklin down to what, like 77, 80 yards. You know, rushing. So we haven't had that big run 
from Sam the last several weeks. Okay, and so uh, we got to, you know, we got to find it. And, and unfortunately, this isn't a week to try to get well. Uh, this is the number one defense in the conference. And we'll move on and talk to that. I mean, Tennessee Tech this weekend in Cookville, Sergeant York Trophy on the line. It's such a big trophy in our conference in between all of the Tennessee schools. And Coach, you just said it, Tech, one of the best defenses in the association. And for those who just look at the record, don't let that fool you. I mean, this is a really good football team that they have. No, uh, defensively, uh, you know, schematically, they, they uh, Dwayne Alexander, I consider him uh, – a friend of mine, and uh, he's done a good job. Had a new hire as the defense coordinator. Uh, schematically, they've done a really good job. They 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 make you earn every every yard that you get. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a good example here. We do a four game breakdown their last uh, four games, okay? And then we kind of analyze that, and that's how we put our game plan together based on that, okay? In the last five games, they have not had. A team has not rushed for uh, – every team has rushed for less than 100 yards in the last five games. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, on big plays of 15-plus yard runs or 20-plus yard passes, right, click it on. Let me see what other teams are doing to exploit them. There's one big run in the last four games. So, there's only one run over 14 – you know, over 15 yards. And there's only 13 passes over 20 yards. In five games? Uh, well, it's a four-game break. Four down. games. Four, four games. games. 100 yards less rushing yeah, okay. okay, in the last five, though. Yeah. So, you know, that, that tells me they got good players. They've got good scheme. They're coached well. They're detailed out. Uh, you know, now they haven't been scoring a lot of points, so sometimes uh, offenses are calling games, you know, not trying to score, you know, 40 points either, okay, You're risking because they've got a kid that's got seven sacks, okay, so which leads the conference. So, you know. But uh, so anyway, that's what you do on Sunday, Mondays. You're gathering all information, saying what are we playing, what are they good at, where, what do you know, what gives us an advantage, or what do we have to be prepared for. So uh, now they've been starting a freshman quarterback. They've had some trouble scoring points, uh, you know. So we need to play that to our advantage. And uh, but they put you in a bind. They got a good offense coordinator, and there's a lot of uh, triple option type things, even though it's not traditional triple option okay but it can be a hand and there's a uh you can flip it in the flat or a quarterback can run it there's 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 some things that make you play assignment football uh that will have to be detailed out um you know so that's our biggest concern on defense to make sure we don't give up a cheap one and coach i mean you get to this point in the season and everybody has their strengths everybody mm -hmm. has their weaknesses but when it comes to game planning this late in the season, I mean, everyone knows that UT Martin's a good rushing team. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that SEMO can throw the ball very well. But how much do you change that throughout the season? And as you get later on, how much do you change it right. when you approach – opponents like Tennessee Tech this week, SEMO yeah. next week, and then Sanford at the end of the year. Well, I don't know if I got a great answer for that, but, I'll t you know, we threw the ball 37 times this past week. Okay, we only had 63 plays. Okay, so we threw it more than we ran it. And if we do a better job in, you know, the flea flicker we ran, if the guard uh, does a better job in protection, uh, Rucker catches the touchdown because the quarterback couldn't get from his first read to his second read off the flea flicker because he had a three technique sitting in his lap. On uh, the, the sack that we took, if we – so that's 70 yards passing, okay, and, and a touchdown. On the do double move where we gave up the scoop and score, right, if the back picks up his protection, all right, just here's the communication, it just didn't block his guy. You know, that one's throwing and catch with an opportunity. And, and so now you come out of that game with t possibly two more touchdown passes and you threw for 300 game. You know, so the, per you know, the perception is then, okay, they've got their pass game, you know, where they want it to go. So, like I said, it's, it's, it's – when you throw the ball well, it's offensive line, it's running backs, it's quarterbacks, it's, it's receivers. There's a, a level of execution that has to happen. And Kincaid in that second half against Gardner Webb had a good had a good time out there in that second half. What are you looking to build on in his performance for no, next week? No, he 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 competed well. I mean, there was, you know, we were trying to take some shots, and they, you know, a lot of blitzes came, and we didn't pick it up always correctly. And so, I mean, he's kind of wheeling and dealing, made a couple of throws, a nice one on the little throwback to uh, the tight end. Uh, so. You know, the, the guy competes, and his teammates respect him for that. And and so he gave us a chance in the game. Uh, I mean, he, he really did, okay? The, the nice touchdown pass to, to Marlin there, the, the empty. Uh, those are some good plays. I mean, those are those are dresser-type plays uh, from, from, from last year. He had the nice run on the on the counter, um, you know, and, and was willing to do whatever he had to do to, for the team win. So 
Uh, you know, I, I, that was one of his better games, to be quite honest with you. Just can we, you know, we pick the blitz up and he throws that ball away maybe. if he, You know, but he couldn't outrun the linebacker. The guy was trying to get him and he's trying to throw it out of bounds. So, uh, yeah, wouldn't need him play well this week. And what's your message to team now only what seems like – it doesn't even seem real, but 12 quarters of regular yeah. season football left. Yeah. I mean, you brought it up on Thursday. There were only 16. Yeah. Now 12 and eight in association yeah. play. I mean, what has to happen – for your team to get another four quarters added onto yeah. the season. Well, if you win, if you if you win that game, you know if if we intercept one of those passes in that last drive or whatever happened, you win that game, right? Then you're worried about, oh, is this a trap game before you play Sebo? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what we're sitting here talking about. Okay, and I'm preaching the whole time how good they are on defense and and you know and what a tough game it's going to be. Uh, if we're as mature as I think that, that we are, and, I'm, you know, I got guys walking around the building today sticking their head in, Coach, you good, you good, you know, Dotson, Sam Franklin, you know, guys that didn't have their best game, okay, and so, you know, that leads me to believe they understand what they're dealing with. They understand the importance of, the, of, of this game, and, you know, you, you win. Sergeant York, that's great. We're fired up. We're, we're, that's a, another feather in our cap, but this gets you to next week with something to continue to play for, and I think there's, there's a couple different roads for us to try to get in the playoffs okay uh you know you still mathematically got three games left you got two conference games left you know so there's 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 that we probably have as many or more pass as anybody else in the conference does all right but you you've got to go play well this week in order to to keep that those math equations alive and the UT Martin football team heading up to Cookville. Coach, I know that it's still a road trip, but you'll appreciate that road trip a little bit more <laughs> than going to Bowling yeah, I was just Springs. thinking, you, that was a long bus ride home after a loss like that. Oh, your mind's just racing. And yeah. I'm in the front seat, man, and it's, it's smaller than the rest of them. And I'm sitting there, I can't get comfortable. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you get the game, you pull it up, and you watch the whole game, office defense special team. You know, that killed about two hours uh, of the trip. And but that's look, only like a I quarter know, of the trip, too. I, I, you know, I look up, not even I look up and you know we're just now in Knoxville and we still got six hours left so t- yeah. tough trip I'm getting a little old for those trips <laughs> well a little bit of an easier trip coming up to Cookville this week Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan Halloween coming up tomorrow the question your favorite Halloween candy and Coach Wilson, I guess we'll right. let you go first. Um, I'll go first. I have a sweet tooth. It kind of depends on the day. I'm a, I'm a big Starburst gal. Um, but I think around uh, – this is kind of gross. I feel like people are going to be grossed out. But candy corn, I really haven't gotten – tried to not get into it the last couple years. Uh-huh. But if I do, it's like it, – yeah, yeah, I could eat a whole bag no, of No, I'm with you right there. I and here, and here's why. Corn. Because I don't eat candy corn any other time of year. Then this so it's time. like once a year. But it's like eating wax, but it's it's like just pure <laughs> sugar. I don't know what it is. But if I get a bag, yeah. I'm going to eat the whole bag. The favorite bag. Starburst flavor, though. You brought up Starburst. It always was pink, but pink I, I mean, it's kind of orange might be the new. Orange. Yeah, red's my least favorite. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I, I'm sad to say I thought they all tasted the same. So. Uh, no, no. Oh for, that, for that oh crowd, it does Sorry. not. For that no, crowd, no, no, it does no. not. And it's the same people who think that Skittles all taste the same. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They have, there's flavors written on the bag for a reason. Coach Varga. I, I'm not much of a candy person, uh, but if I had to choose, I'd, I'd probably break my teeth apart on some gobstoppers. Oh, I'd go Ooh, gobstoppers. that's a good throwback. Okay. I like the gobstoppers. Is, God, what, is there a flavor of a gobstopper? No, I'm not familiar with the with No, the I think there are all kinds of different flavors once you get through different the layers. layers. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, we got to get pickle juice and we got to get gobstoppers. I, the on the other show one would week. be, you know, you know, the Cracker Barrel Jawbreakers. Yeah. Th- those, are, those are pretty good, too, but not good for your teeth. No. <laughs> no. I don't recommend no. those. None of, none of it's good for your teeth. Starburst. Coach, tell me what you got. What's your favorite? I'm not a big uh, chocolate guy. I'd probably say something like sour, sour punch straws, like Ooh. warheads. Um, I'm not too much of a sweet guy, but like sour, like I will sour the or it's extreme. Yeah, those are yeah, those so, are awesome. Or some hot tamales or something like. Those are awesome. Those, those are good, good stuff. We're gonna ask one more. This will be our final one. So just quickly, your favorite Halloween costume you have ever worn, Coach, w- Coach Wilson. I know you've got the kiddos. What are they dressing up as tomorrow? Oh, goodness. Um, a little mouse and okay. Bluey. I, oh, you know, yeah. From, okay. um, the oldest was between, like, hot dog and a bun, which I was really pushing for. Yeah. 
because I, I love that she's not going with the, you know, the Barbie, the, mm -hmm. but she decided on a mouse. Okay. Um, it looks warm and toasty, so it's good because it's going to be cold. Yeah. And then bluey, the littlest one in bluey, so yeah. there we go. Um, for me, we do a Halloween practice every year, so we've had some interesting uh, costumes. We've gone as Dumb and Dumber, Julia and I. We always <laughs> kind of coordinate. We have ours tonight. Um, so I'm not going to spoil our costumes, but we we've done Elsa and on or Elsa and Olaf. Julia went as Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty now, great. Were you Jim Carrey or Jeff Daniels? Which one were you in Dumb and oh, Dumber? Oh goodness, I was um, Jeff Daniels. Okay. No, 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 no. I was Jim Carrey. Carrey. I was orange. I was okay. orange. <laughs> orange. Yeah. Coach Bargain. No, I I never put a lot into the dress up either, but I always had sport jersey so normally it was a cleveland browns jersey okay which, uh, you can feel sorry for that growing <laughs> up. but people would give me more candy because i had a oh, yeah. jersey on i guess they'd be like I'm hey gonna, you could get whatever you i'm want. gonna cut back last year i forgot we were mimes and we didn't speak the entire practice oh that was a good one that was a good, was one. A good one very it was well a nice designed. break for us <laughs> it was yeah, no, i no, bet it was funny and I love, I love costume strategy. What costume oh, yeah. will get me the most co candy? Uh, candy? Put on the Browns. People will feel so sorry for you. So go sympathy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're with the sympathy crowd. Go so you can wrap us up. Uh, I'd say the best one I've worn is I was Aladdin one year. Oh, okay. Oh. It was good. It was pretty basic costume, but it was good. It was a fun fun night in college. Chris, yeah. we got to ask I you. I dressed up like an angel one year. Oh. An angel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a halo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We need to find that picture. Yeah. 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 I think... One time, I was Spider-Man and Batman one time. My brother, there's a picture that my mom has. I need her to go and find it. But my brother had this super scary mask, and we were out on the porch taking pictures before we went trick-or-treating, and he came out and scared the mess out of me. And in these pictures, I'm like three or four, and I am sobbing, crying. <laughs> and my mom is having to hold me. It was, it was an awful time. I will never forgive him for that. That was terrible. He also scared me. I was upstairs having to go get something for my mom. And it was that day. It was Halloween day. And he's hiding in the closet. And I go over and I'm trying to get something. And the closet door just bursts open. He has that mask on. And I, I still got to get him back for that. I still have to find a way to be able to get him you back. You might still that. need therapy for that. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I might. I might need something. If I quit this season, I still be the greatest. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan.